on a planet bursting with mystery and wonder. Perhaps no phenomena triggers a sense of the miraculous more clearly than the life cycle of a butterfly. Depending upon its species, a female butterfly can lay hundreds of eggs during her brief lifetime. Each initiates an extraordinary process of growth and transformation. The eggs are remarkable in themselves. They have species-specific architectures, some of which are just astonishing. For instance, if you look at a monarch egg, it has a beautiful symmetrical structure. It looks like a little miniature dome or cathedral. Ranging in size from a pinhead to the width of a child's fingernail, each egg is attached to a plant by an adhesive fluid secreted by the butterfly. They are lined with a coating of wax that helps keep them moist and viable. In many species, the eggs hatch within a week. Then the newly emerged caterpillar, or larva, wastes no time embarking on the second stage of its journey to adulthood. We call them eating machines because that's their only purpose in life is to just eat and grow. It's just munch, 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 munch. Slice and chew, slice and chew to build up the raw materials for the next stage of life. A caterpillar could gain in weight so fast that it would, would be eating its own weight and leaves, leafy material every day. Equipped with powerful jaws and a digestive tract that extends the length of its body, this stomach with legs can multiply its birth weight more than 3,000 times in less than two weeks. To show you how remarkable this weight gain is, imagine you had an eight pound human baby and he multiplied his weight 3,000 times as he was growing. That would be a 24,000 pound child. That's a big kid. A caterpillar's growth is punctuated by violent surges of transition called molts. Imagine the outer skin of a caterpillar as being sort of like a wetsuit. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, but limited. It's waterproof, so they don't dehydrate. Now, as the caterpillar grows, it fills out that wetsuit, and eventually it reaches a point where it can't grow anymore, and it has to make a new, larger version on the inside. A molt begins when a caterpillar spins and then grasps a silk pad, anchors its body securely with small barbs on its legs, and splits its skin near the capsule covering its head. There are sensors in the cuticle, in the skin of the caterpillar, that are strain detectors. They detect the amount of pressure or strain being put on the skin. And when that is too great, they send a signal to the brain of the caterpillar, which then releases a hormone that causes molting. After several molts, the caterpillar stops eating, finds a secluded spot, and spins another silk pad. When finished, it attaches itself with a pair of claspers on the end of its body, then hangs, almost motionless. It will hang there for a day or so, usually in a J position. All kinds of chemical reactions occur within that caterpillar. It changes color and you have no idea what's going on inside there until all of a sudden it pumps the fluid so that the skin begins to split. The 
caterpillar's final molt marks the beginning of the third stage of a butterfly's development and the appearance of a remarkable structure called a chrysalis. As the old skin is pushed away, the cremaster, a thin extension on the top of the chrysalis, works its way into position to permanently grasp the silk pad. With a scanning electron microscope, the cremaster is magnified more than 500 times. The caterpillar has microscopic hooks on the cremaster, and it attaches those hooks to that silk pad that it puts on the bottom of a leaf or twig. And it begins to spin, and this caterpillar spins and spins and spins because it wants to get rid of that old skin that it has. During the hour that follows, the chrysalis hardens and takes its final form as one of the most fascinating processes in nature is set into motion. The metamorphosis from caterpillar into butterfly. What you see in a chrysalis is not a shapeless mass, but in fact, something very much like a mold for the adult butterfly. You see the wing pads where the adult wings are going to form. And you see the head and the compound eyes appear, visible through the outer case of the pupil shell. Abdominal segments are very clearly separated from the thoracic segments where the wings are going to be attached. All of this is astoundingly new compared to the caterpillar where everything looked sort of the same down the whole length of the body. In a metamorphic insect, what you've got is two body plans. You have to first form one functional body plan, and then you have to switch gears, and you have to take and form a new body plan. I am amazed by development when it goes from egg to caterpillar, because it's such an intricate process. But then you have to enter into the chrysalis stage, and you have to get it right again. So it's like the problem squared. The creation of a butterfly begins with the partial destruction of the caterpillar. Inside the chrysalis, larval cells that form the caterpillar's limbs and organs are systematically digested and broken down. You've got to get rid of or digest the caterpillar tissues. They won't work for the adult. In fact, the cells themselves disappear, but then their components are recycled and are turned into a kind of soup out of which the adult structures will be built. The magnitude of this transformation has been compared to a Model T Ford that suddenly encases itself within a garage. Inside, most of the car breaks down into fragments of metal, rubber, and glass. These pieces then reorganize themselves into components more complex than any that previously existed in the Model T. After several days, the garage door bursts open and a radically different mode of transportation lifts off into the sky. Now, an analogy like that is pure whimsy. But even if it were somehow possible, I don't think turning a car into a helicopter would be nearly as impressive as the actual transformation that takes place inside a chrysalis. It's impossible to look at a caterpillar turning into a butterfly and not ask how. How did this happen? How is it regulated? How is it controlled? 
this astonishing, remarkable transformation. When you process all the evidence revealed through metamorphosis, and then you ask yourself, in your own experience, what kind of cause could bring about these results? I think the only reasonable answer is an intelligence that transcends the natural world. A designer with foresight and a sense of engineering and artistry and the ability to light up the sky on a summer afternoon with magnificent evidence that life on Earth is the product of something greater than a blind, undirected process.